Hi, my name is S. Rob, and I'm talking to Sol Ravencraft. Hey, Rob, what do you got? Well, we're talking about when dog-headed men attack. Now, as you know, we, we were both on the World Magic Movement episode when there was actually a type of dog-headed man attack. And we'll be playing that later on. But I want to describe a little bit the roots of the dog-headed men, the Cinephily. What you're talking about are normally described as creatures with the heads of a dog or at least a dog or wolf something like that they cross over quite a lot with the werewolf legend but unlike a lot of these things there is proof that they seem to exist which we actually uncovered uh, and they go right the way back to ancient Egypt probably the first dog-headed men were uh, some of the old Egyptian gods which had various different animal heads but some of them had dogs heads as well uh, then you go later on and the crossover with the werewolf legend so you're also talking about werewolves so they may the power to transform even but I thought I'd talk a little about about what happens when they attack and one of these is actually called uh, like a wolf headed skeleton attack and this happened in sometime prior to 1926 okay we don't know exactly when it was and it was basically uh, a local archaeologist was digging and discovered a human skeleton with a wolf's head uh, what happened was the man took the discovery home but when he came home he was besieged by a werewolf apparently hammering on his door and what he did is he you know he barricaded himself in and then he put the skeleton back in place so that was you know one dog-headed man or werewolf depending on how you look at it because really we're talking about times when it was difficult possibly to describe exactly how something looked you know when people are panicked they don't always make perfect descriptions but that was described as a werewolf but it was literally you know a skeleton of a man with a dog's head so you got a dog-headed man there you know and protected by another at least similar beast and that's a very interesting story there that you've got something actually attacking uh, but there is one's an interesting one a little bit nearer that happened in April 1975 and this was a man unfortunately committed suicide uh, at, a, at a crossroads he was cutting off his flesh because it, he was turning into a werewolf uh, those are the ones you know there's the things are weird cat and other ones about a a woman who said she saw a wolf's howl, or heard a wolf's howl, uh, you know, a, a grey man with a wolf's head, so you're really talking another one there, and that is an ex-mower, and that was in the 19th century sometime, but I think our uh, event, what happened to us, is far, far more interesting, uh, because you were there at the time, as I was, you know, yeah, and I think I should, we should explain, this was on a World Magic Movement episode, one a, a series you do together and what basically happened was it was a big ritual at the start that was done by me a video cultism ritual which is an area I invented whereby people can create a cultism by watching with intent there's a bit more to it than that and there was various different entities used and it was to summon dogs headed men but also realize I need to make them more noticeable because you know like I do cryptozoologists will say well how do we know these extra dog headed men are yours so I thought and to turn the dog headed men into transvestites and, and I said to turn transvestites into dog headed men which I thought was quite clever apparently uh, some of the transgender people which I was confused by because I wasn't really talking about them were a bit upset by that but the thing was I actually found was is you got a really strong response because basically we end up having a conversation uh, which didn't make sense and seemed to at the time whereby this whereby we were talking to each other it was recorded you know in two places an external mic and an, in, and an internal mic on Skype and when we played it back you were talking with a different set of people to I was so that's you know and basically what we've got on the episode is the converse is not that, that conversation we've have us talking about what actually happened at the time because it was gobbledygook there's just there was no making any sense of it you know uh, yeah I don't know what your thoughts are on that but I think that's probably the most interesting dog-headed man attack that I, or men attack that I can think of because it's happened 
you know, not that long ago. It was, you know, what was it, a few months back? It's not a long time. You know, because if you look, these things seem to be, you know, always in the past, these, these dog-headed men attacks. It's always like, it's like the 19th century, you know, you know, before 1926. Okay, that's not that far back. But this one, 2018, it would be, you know. And that's a different thing altogether when you're talking. Or maybe, maybe December. Of 2017, actually, maybe just. But like I said, that is not, uh, you know, something which is a wild length of time away. But also, it showed them as intelligent, because people tend to assume that you're talking about savage beasts, you know. And we've all been sort of led that way by the uh, by the films. We've all seen the films, you know, American Werewolf in London, you know, all these ones, all all those films. And what we seem to have be coming against the the dog headed man attack we had was thought out intelligent and we didn't know it was going on until afterwards, you know. So that they were obviously using a lot of psychic power, they were obviously concealing it really well. And I thought it was really funny that that basically speaking, nobody had any idea what we were doing about this until it was released. And when it was, nobody was concerned about the dog headed man attacking, at least nobody who commented on the links i think somebody did most of them seem to be interested about uh the, the this whole transgender thing which it wasn't actually about transgender they didn't even know about it until it was released you know if it was one guy uh you know but i thought that was strange isn't it strange rob uh, Sol, that in actual fact nobody was bothered about our safety you know it's nice to know it's nice to know that we are loved nobody cares you know, <clears throat> you know, there we had, you know, in two different locations, you know, a thought out attack with two sets of dog headed men, you know, using either mind control or some sort of occult means so that we wouldn't know they were there and yet obviously did when we played, when we played the section back and yet people seemed far more interested about other things. It's strange, isn't it? You know, you'd think you'd be thinking, oh my God, the dog headed men are coming, but they don't. But don't, that isn't what happens, you know, it's just like, you know, I thought it was weird, can people just not get over this thing, you know, so what, you know, and we're interested in the dog-headed men, you know. Anyway, but I think we'll now pass over to that section from that episode so that you can hear uh, us describing what happened at a time that was much, much sooner to it. Uh, we would literally, we'd literally just done it, okay? And I'm going to go to that now, the World Magic Movement episode, with describes a dog-headed man attack. And even at that period in time, it's quite possibly we're still under attack because we had a lot of technical problems with visuals and things that need to be fixed and all types of things. Uh, and we're going to hand that over now, and that's from uh, myself, S. Rob, and Sol Ravencraft. And we're going to hand over to us again, talking on the World yes, Magic this Movement. this was a bizarre experience. Well, my name is S. Rob, and I am talking to Sol Ravencraft. Hello, Sol. Hello, Rob. We are, uh, some weird happened. It did, yeah. We're re-recording this segment. And really, what we're talking about is, I'll just say what happened first. Uh, when we recorded the segment, because this were actually recorded more than one at once. So, at first it was fine. You know, everything was okay. And then something weird happened, Sol. Uh, we started having different conversations. Conversations that made sense, but didn't actually, not with each other. And first it was you. We planned to talk about dog-headed men. And then you, you soon started talking about dog-headed men. But for some reason, I was hearing something else. I was having a conversation with a different entity, as I believe were you. And then later on at some point, I started talking about dog-headed men. And, you know, it was weird. But what happened then was the Skype recorder went off, but my external track kept going. So it is weird. Honestly, what I think's happened is, I think it's some sort of a conspiracy because of the, because uh, we both watched the ritual beforehand. 
uh, you know, the ritual with the dog-headed men and turn them into trust of France red states and, you know, to turn trust red states into dog-headed men and summon the dog-headed men. It was quite an elaborate ritual, but quite short. And what I think has happened is all the preparation also, probably the sending stuff by the internet backwards and forwards, we've alerted them what was going on. Because I don't think it was just as a result of the ritual, but I do believe things manifested while we were recording. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. What you described to reminded me of an old two, uh, sketch with two Ronnies, where a couple of guys are making separate phone calls, and we just hear their side of the conversation, but the uh, the conversations overlap as though they're talking to each other. But they're they're very funny that way. We should we should provide a link to that. It's a classic. Yeah, it is a classic. Uh, but what I think it is, I think it's really uh, it shows that there's a conspiracy here, with, but it's not a human conspiracy. You know, we would assume it would be dog-headed men that would have appeared, but this wasn't just two. I think this was quite a few. Nobody said dog-headed man. We both said dog-headed men. And I think what you've got is a part of a conspiracy, which we were lucky enough to record, of dog-headed men or other entities as well, to conceal their existence. So basically, they wanted to conceal their existence, and they happened to do it when we were recording, and they didn't know exactly what was going on. So what happened is, you know, first they appeared for you, then they appeared for me as well, and then when they realised we were recording it, they put the Skype recorder off. But the external mic was still going. So, <laughs> well, and we've also been broadcasting into hell. We've we've been causing a good deal of disruption. I'm guessing there are a lot of uh, entities that are uh, are wanting to to. Uh, Mess with us a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, in the ritual, I opened more than one gateway. You know, I used multiple gateway entities. Uh, two, actually, I, I believe. So what you're talking about is something that already had quite a lot of gates open. But I think it's, I think it's fascinating because it's very solid proof, isn't it, that, you know, these things can manifest. It's proof to me, like you said, that we are actually broadcasting into hell because people won't always believe us. Yes. Some people won't. But, you know, it's proof that we're broadcasting into these places because they are starting to mess with us, you know. Uh, to, yeah, to me, it's like, see if you were a person who was mad about ufology and you see a flying saucer, everyone else will run away, but they'd be running towards it. And it's, you know, it's that type of a situation. You know, it was great. We were right there at the, uh, you know, at the centre of the storm. We were at the centre of the hurricane. You know, we were right there. You know, it's probably one of the most uh, powerful occult experiences you can get because they literally were able to, to or attempted to right. conceal their presence. Right. So you've got really quite an organised, large-scale thing. Although I didn't experience any loss of time, and neither did you, because that would have been recorded if it were taken anywhere. No, everything seemed very coherent, and uh, I, I was not aware that there was a problem until you contacted me and said that the recording was, was messed up. Yeah, that's the crazy thing, neither was I. I thought we had a perfectly coherent... <laughs> Uh, you know, the conversation, and then you play it back in it, but this doesn't make sense. It makes you wonder how many times this happens on Skype, uh, you know. Well, and you and I have been struggling with Skype this morning. Uh, I mean, we're in separate places. I'm in Texas. You're, you're in the U.K., uh, and we really were struggling to get a connection good, but have you noticed that as we've been talking and we've been – calling out this possibility of entities affecting our work together, that our connection has gotten clearer. That is true, actually. It has, hasn't it? Yeah, it's gotten a lot clearer, yeah. It's cleared up. But it is fascinating, isn't it? Because the thing is, you assume if you're having a telephone conversation that uh, you're both having the same conversation. Yes. But this proves that actually you might not be. And it also proves that you won't know that you're not. You know, people could have fell out, wars could have happened, simply because, I think now it's getting, I'm talking about war and it's starting, the connection's starting to get bad. <laughs> you know, simply because uh, they both had different conversations with different entities. Sure. sure.